Amen, church. How many of you are thankful for another day's journey? Amen. 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 Uh, Pastor, I, I should have uh, mentioned uh, to add that this Sunday, or this month is April, and it has five Sundays in it. So, of course, on that fifth Sunday is our fifth Sunday gospel scene. So I may be going to people, asking them if they want to sing, or do an instrumental, or a reading. But you feel free and tell me that you're going to do something, too. And then I'll just put your name down and, and uh, we'll go from there. Pastor was also talking about an upcoming men's meeting. Uh, last night, I, I believe the ladies had their uh, women's meeting. It looked like they had a nice crowd. And I came in just to put songs in the computer for tonight and came away with a jar of pickled beets. <laughs> <laughs> that made my whole evening. Yeah. Amen, amen. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, let's sing this worship song tonight, church, and invite the presence of the Lord here. It's alive, alive. We know He's alive and well and living deep down in our souls. So let's sing this song, Alive, Alive. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore.
song. It's called Majesty. Worship with Majesty. something in my life. I need God to help me with something tonight. Amen. Let's pray together tonight and believe the Lord can do what you need Him to do. Father, we thank You. Lord, we praise You tonight for being a God that's never changed, a God that's never lost any power nor authority. We know, God, tonight there's nothing, God, that we have to go through, God, that You can't help us through. Father, I know sometimes life is hard. It's not always easy, but God, You never promised a bed of roses, but God, You said no matter what we have to go through, 
you'll always be there. Father, we pray tonight, God, that you would touch each and every one tonight that may be sick in their body. God, that you would touch them right where they're at tonight. Those that are here, God, that are sick, not feeling well, God, that I pray you would touch them and strengthen them. God, the tonight. God, those that may be in the nursing home. God, those that couldn't come tonight. God, due to sickness. I pray, God, that you would touch them right where they're at tonight. Touch their bodies. Strengthen them. God, heal. Make them whole tonight, Father. God, I pray, God, for every need, every hand. God, that was lifted tonight. You know the needs before we even ask. But God, you told us and we shall receive, Father. We're asking tonight for your help, God. I pray, God, that you just meet every need, God, emotional, spiritual, financial, whatever the need is, God, we ask right now, God, that you begin to make a way where there seems to be no way. Father, encourage those, God, that are discouraged. God, give those the faith. God, faith is weak tonight. Father, I know tonight there's nothing that you cannot do. And Father, we ask it all tonight in the name of your Son, Jesus. Lord, we pray it all in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Let's sing this chorus and thank God for answering our prayers tonight. tonight you give as unto the Lord and he will bless you tonight I guarantee it we can't out give the Lord amen how many can raise your hands tonight say I'm blessed because of Jesus amen brother Bill would you pray over the offering
Brother Brandon with us tonight. He's going to come and bring forth the word tonight. Let's give him and the Lord a hand clap tonight. Hello. Okay. Like that little robot. Wally. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Several have asked me where Sister Brown is. Last Thursday night, she fell in the restroom at home. And uh, when I tell people that, everybody says I shoved her. One pastor called and he said he was really beating on her, and that's what happened, to tell the truth. So, uh, anyway, so she hurt her back and her hip. No pain was going down her leg. So I told her, I said, I don't sweat it. I said, get in bed and sleep it off, and we'll, 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 we'll go to the doctor tomorrow. She said, well, let's go to urgent care tonight. I said, no, I'm too sleepy. <laughs> it's like when, she, when our baby was born, my daughter. She, I said, don't you have that baby tonight? It was Sunday night. I was tired. And I said, because Monday's my golfing day. So about 2 o'clock in the morning, she says, Tom, I think it's time. I went in there, tried to put my pants on. I was trying to put my leg down the leg of my pants, you know. Instead of up here, I had my pants turned upside down. And I was trying to put them on. All my change fell out, my pocket, my comb, and everything. I don't go anywhere without a comb, hallelujah, and, uh, and all of that. Huh? <laughs> I don't need one today. <laughs> hallelujah. I'm working toward getting the Terry Van Hoosier look. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. But anyway, make a long story short, she went to the doctor and he's giving her some medicine. Said there was no broken bones and everything like that. So she's being good to me right now. Hallelujah. And everything like that. Because God is good. Praise God. It's good to be here tonight. Say the Lord richly bless you. Appreciate you coming out. I know you all been in revival. I was not here, but I watched a lot of the services online. And uh, excellent. They were good. Terry didn't be quite a song leader and everything like that. He, he, he's back there. He got that foot cranking, you know. <laughs> I, I can't do it, but he got it down, man. I sat in there. I was watching him one night when I was sitting up here. But he, he, he got it down. He's doing all right, man. He, becoming popular, a bald head and a singer and everything like that. Man, he's doing all right. I got to shut up. <laughs> all right. Praise God. Now, tonight, uh, uh, before we start, I, I just want to tell you, I'm going to use a Amplified Bible. I don't want to offend anybody. It's just as anointed as anything else. Uh, I like the King James, and I'll use it too. The Amplified Bible is clearer with the interpretation. 
now one of the things we don't understand a lot of times is the difference between an interpretation and a translation ok we always say what's the interpretation well before you know some things you've got to translate it from one language to another other language interpretation is after that has been translated then you read it and you interpret it now here's what the Bible says scripture is of no private interpretation in other words we don't have a lease on it that bless God we're the only ones that's right but you do have to watch for improper interpretations and proper interpretations okay? and that's where the leading of the Holy Spirit comes in right there right there so one of my friends he was Joyce Myers pastor and uh, went to college together he did real good in his church built the bread the large church in uh, St. Louis and Joyce Meyer was one to the Lord under his ministry and uh, brother Shelton a friend of mine he's telling me about her going to church there and all that and she come to him one night and said uh, Shelton said I want to teach a Bible study he said uh, she said he said I, I don't know if you're really qualified or not because she hadn't been saved long you know there's no certain period for a lot of things God when he does things he does them on his time chart not yours that's why some of us we can't go at God's time because we get impatient okay but God's time is always right on time. So, and so he said, if you can get you a Bible class together, you can teach it. So she went out and got 58 people to come listen to her teach the Bible. And she asked Pastor Shelton, can I teach now? And he said, well, yeah. And, and he was running 3,000 at the time in church. And... Uh, He's, he's just a dynamic guy. He's one of those guys, everything he touches turns gold. So the class grew from 58 to about 75. Then it grew to 100. And then it kept growing, and her ministry was growing right there in his church. So he said to her, I think you better leave. And he didn't mean just, you know, he didn't want to run her off said, but I think God's calling you to the ministry to follow God and go build something. So she left, didn't take any of the church people with her, took about 175. She had got out and won to the Lord and things, Bible class. And that's, then today she's a national phenomenon on TV preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's amazing what the Holy Ghost does when he gets in a person's life and they listen to God. All right. Now the pastor could have been stingy. He could have said, "You just young. You don't know what you're doing." But you know what he recognized? He recognized the move of God in that lady's life and that ministry. One of the first things we need to recognize is this, and don't be scared of it, and be patient with it. Is that God is going to lead you through the fire, through the flood, whatever you go through. God is going to lead you and take care of you. You need to know that from get-go, all right? And uh, people will try to talk you out of a lot of things, but, you know, it's bad when we listen to the person on the job that never goes to church tell us all about God. And that's the way it was when I was working in college and stuff. So tonight... We're going to start with uh, John chapter 14. Now I'll be reading from the Amplified Bible, verse 26. And then uh, we'll go back up 13 through 18. Now we're going to use the Bible quite a bit, all right? That's God's authority. That is God's Word. And uh, whatever the Bible says, it's true. 
You can take it to the bank, and you can trust what the Lord says. One of the things we are losing in America is being able to take another person at their word. My dad was in the 50s. He'd shake hands with somebody, make a deal with a car, walk away, and that was it. Signed the papers a week later. Everything. Still good because of a man, a man of his word. You won't find any better person in the world than people who keep their word. All right? And you won't find any better people than those who are confident with what you share for them. All right? I've always taught my people, be careful who you tell what's going on in your life or who you use for your leader spiritually, so to speak, because I have found out it is true what the Bible says. The tongue is like a little fire. And some of them have dragon breath. Hallelujah. <laughs> and and, and, and it, 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 it's bad. That's one of the worst things happening in the church. Somebody said, where you find terrorists? I said, go to church sometimes. You'll find them there because you've got people that won't intermingle. But you know what? This is your church. God gave it to you. You take care of it. That's what it is. If anybody speaks to you negative about your church or your pastor, then don't go run telling everybody. This is your family. You don't run down the street and tell everybody your family business is going on in your home. This is your family. Take care of your family. Hallelujah. And everything. So turn in the Bible to John chapter 14, verse 26. And now, the thing we know most about the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost uh, in Pentecost mostly evolves around uh, the gifts of the Spirit. There are the fruit of the Spirit, but we hear that very, not, not very often. And then tongues and interpretation and not just all the things that the Holy Spirit was sent to do in our lives. You see, w w without the Holy Spirit, there is no church. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no promotion of the Word of God. Because you've got to remember what the Scripture says. Paul said, he said, the letter... You can know this book by the letter. Okay, He said, but the letter killeth, but the Spirit gives life. So, I know Purdue professors who know this book probably better than any of us. But they don't believe it's from God. They believe it's a good piece of literature that was written by religious men. This book is only alive because of the power of the Holy Ghost. It is backed up by what Jesus said it would do. Okay? And everybody is looking for something else. Running here, running here. I, I've got one lady that I know is a good friend of mine. She goes to every revival in the country. She can't stay in one church. She's not going to stay in one church. There's no use in me telling her that. But where there's a revival, you'll find her. She'd been down to Brownsville. She'd been to Florida. She was to Oral Roberts. She, she's been to Jensen Franklin and everybody. She never, she never, she don't have a home church. Okay? Now, here's the sad thing about not having a home church or a home place. You don't put down roots. You see, the church is the home of your soul. Put down roots in that church with yourself, your family, and everybody that you can bring or get in. But the first thing about it all is to know that the Holy Spirit brought us together. Now, there's some folks in this church I know they're going to stick with us through thick and thin. Okay? 
But you can't be hard on people, okay? You can be, but it doesn't do you any good. So you need to just be tender, and, and that's the whole purpose of the Holy Ghost, to be a comfort and a guide to you in your life. So here's what was said in the Bible in John chapter 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, I notice he, he addresses him here. Counselor, the Helper, the Intercessor, the Advocate, the Strengthener, man that stands by me he not man but stands by me the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name now everything is done in the name of Jesus alright in my place to represent me and act on my behalf Jesus said it's expedient for me to go if I do not go the comforter cannot come. Sometimes we, and even Jesus did, put himself not, not just aside, but he stepped back because he realized that the Heavenly Father was going to continue his works through the power of the Holy Ghost. And what the Holy Ghost does is it manifests the works of Christ in the church. All right? Now, a lot of people think that you, to go to heaven, you've got to speak in tongues. If you've got to speak in tongues to go to heaven, what was the purpose of the cross? There's only one way to heaven. One way. Not Allah. Not Confucius or any of those guys. One way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That was the words of Jesus spoke from the Father. Why did he speak these things from the Father? Because the Holy Spirit anointed him and spoke through him. And Jesus did not do anything without the Father knowing it. You ever been around people that, that got ESP? They just know things. You ever been around those kind of people before? I despise them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't despise them. But it seems like to me they have a gift, if you want to call it. My mother was like that, all right? Most mothers are, I think. One night I come home and my mother said, what happened to you and everything? Well, I had gotten a little mishap, hallelujah. My face was all bruised, puffed up. I've been beat to a pulp. And she said, where have you gone? I says, well, I went down the road here and got some more guys and we got in trouble. She said, yeah, you went out there. You went where I told you not to go. I knew you were there. And I waited on you all night till you come home so I could catch you and tell you that you need to stay home and get these things right and listen to me. How many of you have been around people that can read you like a book. All right? Now, when I was pastoring, there's some people that I knew, they were going to make church once a month. That's when the Holy Ghost decided to move on them. Every once a month. And some come to church Christmas and Easter whether they need it or not. You know. So, so the Holy Spirit is not inconsistent. So if you're inconsistent in your life, you'll never come to the place that you want to come in your walk with the Lord. One of the things that people like when they hire somebody to work for them, they want them to be there. That's the way it is with God. He wants you to be there so He can talk to you. Now, I know I tell people I talk to God, and they say, I don't believe that. I said, well, you can believe this either. He talked back. Because, you see, the whole message of the Bible and the Word of God is this. In the mouth of any two or three witnesses, let his what? 
What? Right. Let the word be established. In the mouth of any two or three witnesses. Now, where do we find, first find the Holy Spirit in the Bible? Anybody have an idea? Where? In Genesis. Chapter what? One. It says, what? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without void and form, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved. The truth is you're saved because the Spirit of God moved on your dead life. You're saved because the Holy Spirit drew you to Jesus Christ. You felt conviction. And I used to say to them, you know, uh, uh, one time I, I got upset with God when I was in Bible college about tithing. Now, that's a subject that you don't preach on because it concerns money. But anyway, if you love your money more than you love God, you, you got a problem. Okay? I have a problem if I, if I do that. And uh, there's some things I have to watch in my life that, that I used to love more than anything else in the world. That's really what you call an idol. Okay? And everything. But... Uh, <coughs> When you come to a place where you love something more than you love God, you are substituting something to please your life that is not pleasing to God. Okay? And when you're not pleasing to God, a lot of times you're probably not pleased with yourself. A lot of people say, I don't know what's the matter with me. People don't want me telling them what's the matter with them. They don't. You try to tell somebody, you know, bless God, it's my life, I'll live it. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. I had one young person when I was pastor come to me and said, yeah, Brother Brennan, nobody's going to tell me what to do. And I said to him, he said, I'll live my life like I want to. And he said, you quit trying to tell me what to do. I wasn't trying to tell him what to do. I was trying to teach him what was best for his life. And he said to me, well, I'll do what I want to. I said, let me tell you something, young man. You're making a wreck of your life, and you need me to help you keep it on course. Truth is, you need spiritual leadership. And I said, not just of a pastor, but you need the leadership of God in your heart. So the Bible says here, came my name in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. Okay? He will teach you all things. Not just going to leave you in the middle of anything. He's going to take you and teach you through everything. Now, just about everything you go through is a lesson that you need to learn. Okay? Now, my favorite motto is for myself, because I spent two of my best years in college as a freshman, is flunking out is part of success. And, and, and so because of that, I had to do my freshman year over. I'm glad I was working paying for my own education. My mom and dad was helping me, but if I, if I wouldn't have been <laughs> paying for it myself, my dad would have threw me against the wall like a piece of jello, and I'm stuck. But, but that, that's what's happening, okay? So, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you about God's will. He will teach you all things. Now, I want to say something about teaching. A person with a spirit that cannot be te taught will never be what they should be in the kingdom of God. They will, they will constantly turn up turmoil. They will constantly do that. You know why? Because their spirit is not right and cannot be guided. 
And my brother was a cowboy and a bull rider and rodeos. And he said to me, Tommy, you broke horses all the time. He said, if you break the spirit of the horse, you kill him. He will be no good to you. And if the devil breaks your spirit from God, the next thing he's going to try to do is kill you. Maybe not physically, but spiritually. And then it said, and he will cause you to recall and will remind you and bring you to remembrance. How many people have, have sat through church services, preacher gives an altar call, they go back in their mind to something they know they need to correct, that they need to ask God for forgiveness for, or that they're, they're not born again, they don't know Jesus Christ as Savior. And, and, and you know who brings that to their remembrance? That's not just something that's happening casually. And it's not happening. And somebody told me one time, one of our greatest problems is not being able to forget. One of our greatest problems is our memory. You see? Now, forgive and forget. That's what everybody says. Oh. Let me tell you something about forgive and forget. You don't forget that easy. And forgive and forget is not likely to happen that fast. The problem that many people have, and I think it's a tool of the Holy Spirit, is their memory. Now, I know we all sing the song, Precious Memories, How They Linger. Of course, we're talking about church. That's what I'm talking about. Because I don't, I don't want to remember anything else that was bad for my life. I want to get rid of it. God, God amazes me. He said that when you come to Him, when the Holy Spirit woos you to Him, He will cast your sins into the sea of forgetfulness. It says He'll do it, not you. Because we don't have that ability sometimes. But people do forgive and forget, okay? So another thing, He said He said He'd cast them as far as the east is from the west. How far is that? My goodness. You want to take a world tour? There you go. That's what the Lord said. Now, then He goes on and He says, Bring to your remembrance... Everything I have told you. Okay? I can't remember everything my wife tells me when I go to the store. But the whole purpose of the Holy Spirit is to bring to my remembrance. Help me. I'm a, you know, one of the questions I've had to ask myself years and years, all the time is, how much do I read the Word? Huh? Okay, I can't operate a cell phone. You know why? I haven't read the book. All right? And if you haven't read something, how can you know what to do? All right? Now, I'm glad we have a Holy Ghost pastor. I don't want no man in this pulpit that don't pray. Especially when he's got a guy like me going to his church. All right? I know we use this term lightly, but it's a, it's, it is an important term that we really need to think about. Pray about it. And I know that sounds routine. But then let's go back to John chapter 14 and verse 13. Lord me, it's almost 10 to 8. Don't worry, folks. I'll let you out by 9 o'clock. Say, you don't have to worry about letting us out. We'll be gone anyway. <laughs> All right, let's read John 
chapter 14, and I'm reading from the Amplified Version. And uh, if you want to pick up an Amplified Version, you can pick up a paperback copy for about five bucks, usually about anywhere. Okay. If you're like me, go to the uh, keep going to uh, Goodwill. Okay. And Goodwill won't make you pay for a Bible. They'll give them to you. That's why I've got so many. Hallelujah. They cannot, they said, they, they, they said, yeah, you get it on your phone now. Get it on your phone. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Shucks, they don't have nothing on our Pentecostals. Call him up, call him up. Hallelujah. But I see kids in church playing games on them things. If I was a kid, I'd be doing the same thing. I love you. But anyway, let's look at, at, at John chapter 14, beginning in verse 13. Okay. Whoops, wait a minute. Not 13. Verse 18. Okay. I will not leave you as orphans. Okay. And, and, and I will not leave you as orphans. And the Bible says here, comfortless, desolate, bereaved, forlorn, helpless. I will come back to you. God is never going to leave you. He'll follow you to a beer joint. He'll follow you into prison. But the only reason He's following you is to deliver you. But the truth is, the Holy Spirit, to take over your life, must at some point be the supreme authority. There is no authority greater than the authority of God's Word and the leading of the Holy Ghost. You're going to laugh at this, but this is true. I got in trouble in Haiti one time. And in Haiti, the government likes to take care of the people like all dictators. And the, and the people wrote a, a, a letter to the, uh, to the minister of cults. Now, that just means minister of religion, okay? Not, not the voodoo doctor. And the Lord spoke to me one day and said, there's trouble in the camp, you know. And he said, I want you to get out of your bed, I want you to go down the hill, and you'll see a man walking with an envelope in his hand, and stop that man and ask him to give you that envelope. Okay? It was the man who was next to my interpreter. Okay? So they had been plotting. I stopped that man and I said, where are you going with that letter? They were going down to the minister of cults, minister of religion. And it was a letter about me. It said I treated their people like a dog. I was mean. Not me, man. No, not, not Tom Brown. No. And I said, and, and something just impressed me. It said, stop and get that letter. And I stopped and got that letter. And it was written in French. <laughs> and the truth is this. I opened that letter and I read it to that guy. He said, I thought you didn't speak French. I said, I'm not speaking French. I'm speaking in the Holy Ghost, man. It was only the Lord. So the minister of cults, they went and told him what I'd done. He called me down there. And I had a backward collar that I used to just play games with. Me and my wife used to get on the airplane and I'd wear that backward collar. And everybody come down and say, Good evening, Father. Here's my wife. Good evening, Father. All right? I put on that backward collar because the Catholic Church in Haiti is long. And I was supposed to see, have an audience with about the guy who was the fourth person in the government. Now, I could have really been in trouble. But I went down there, and I couldn't speak a bit of French. 
speak a little Creole. And the Lord said, you go. Well, the Lord didn't really tell me to wear that backward collar. I just thought it was a good idea. But I thought, well, I see all these priests go everywhere they want around here with a backward collar, so why can't I do it? So I put on that backward collar, and I went down there to the government office. And when I walked into that government office, the guy said, Come on in, Father. Come on in, Father. I couldn't speak, but they had a guy that was a graduate from Harvard sitting in the office with the minister of religion who was fluent in English. And so the, the minister of cults began to talk to me in French, and the guy interpreted, and what I wanted to say, he interpreted back. Now that is a miracle. God protects his people. Okay? Now, I could have been thrown out of Haiti. I could have been thrown in prison. I could have been a lot of things. But God was on the scene. That, that's the only way that happened. That's not coincidence. And when, when the Lord got through with me, it scared the devil out of me. You know? It, it did. It, it, it scared me to death when I thought about what could have happened. And then they were getting ready to take a hundred pieces of property from the Pentecostal Church of God and take our registration away from us. And the Lord said, go in and talk to him. And that was like, Ananias going to get Paul. So, Lord, I went in there. He looked at all my papers that I had, my deeds and everything. He said, don't worry about it, Father. You'll be all right. Your church has a lot of privileges in this country. Whoa, hallelujah. You see, God leads you and protects you. Somebody said, that ain't true. How do you think Paul went to Macedonia to preach the gospel? He went to Macedonia to preach the gospel because in a vision he saw a man's face. And in that man's face, the Lord was speaking to him, Go, come, come over to Macedonia and help us. The Holy Spirit reveals God's plan to you and you follow it. You know, don't allow your natural affections or love for something else pull you away from the divine assignment that God has for your life. You're not in this church by accident. You're here because God put you here. I believe God leads you wherever you go. All right? Then you hear people say, I'm so glad I listened to God. How many times have you said that in your life? Glad I listened to Him. Well, it must not have been the devil speaking to you because I don't think you'd be happy listening to Him. It was God. And then it goes on in the Scripture here. And he says, he says, just a little while now, and the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. We're only alive because of the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. That's why the Bible says, This same Spirit which raised his body from the dead, so shall likewise raise your body. But you can't have that experience unless you die in Christ. Okay? Then, here's people say, I'm so glad our life... Our, uh, how, you know, here, here's the way churches are, are, are judged. They're either dead or they're hot. There's no in-between. Okay? A dead church will morph. It'll curl up and you'll begin to smell everybody. Because they're dead. Nothing ever happens there. One guy said to me something about this church here, and this is my church, and when he said it, I, I wanted to crack his skull, but that's a bad attitude, I think. And, and, and this, is, this, is, this is where God dwells. This is as important as the temple was in the time of Jesus. This church is as important as the, as the tabernacle was in the Old Testament. And you being in the presence of God 
is just as important as it is to make other appointments that you make. Because, see, on Sunday, you're, you're, a lot of you folks are very faithful, very faithful. If I'd ever had a church this faithful, I'd have shouted. Hallelujah. But it's set by the leadership of the pastor and the people who take leadership for it. Now, the Holy Spirit interacts for us. We depend on Him. And it's the Word of God that we believe. Now, I want to show you some things here. And at that time, when the day comes, you will know for yourselves that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. All right? That's why Jesus said, that's why it said in the Scripture, greater things than these shall you do, because I go to my Father. Okay? The person who has my commands and keeps them is one who really loves me. And whoever really loves me will be loved by my Father and I too, and will love him and will show him and will reveal to him and manifest to him myself to him. I will set myself be clearly seen by him and make myself real. That is done by the move of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now, listen to this. You ever had the Holy Spirit reveal something bad about a person? I've learned this. There's good people and bad people in this world. And there's some that's up to no good. And there's some that's up to good. Okay? And I learned another thing that Smart people, Christians, listen to the voice of the Lord. Listen to the voice of the Lord. Don't, don't, don't take things. Peter said, when Ananias and Sapphira come, remember, they were supposed to pay their tithe off of the money they had made from selling property. Because that was agreement that the church had made among themselves and being led by God. They were supposed to give X amount of dollars. Probably a tithe. Okay? And she said, or he said, well, we, we, we did this or we did that. We made this. And bam. If that happened today, we have dead people every Sunday. I'm just being truthful, you know. And there was times I'd have been one of those dead people because I was doing the same thing everybody else was doing until one time I got four flat tires on my car in one night and I decided I'll never quit tithing from now on out. And ever since the thing, it's all where the rubber meets the road in your life. That's what it is. And then the Bible says this, in the mouth of any two or three witnesses, let my word be established. We are witnesses to these things and also to the Holy Spirit, is what they said in the book of Acts. Take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among you which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers of. That's what he told the apostles. That's what he tells preachers and everything like that. What is it if we don't have the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit? Now, I want you to know there's a difference between the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit ruling and reigning in your life. And we'll study that, you know. And I'm sure that when we get to that part, it's going to be a good part. Because there's a lot of concern about that. But one of the main things that people misuse tongues for is to demonstrate in front of people. They misuse it. You see, they want to be spiritual leaders in the church service. And people get kind of tense. You know? 
And have you ever been in the church service where they just go on and on and on and on with tongues, one right after another? One right after another, just keep going. What does the Bible say? The Bible see by two, and at the most by three, let his word be established. Anything after that does not establish his word. You know why it's like that? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. These three. Now, I'm not teaching oneness doctrine here. These three are one. Okay? If you say something about Brother Chris's family, you're not talking about just him. You're talking about Stephanie, who's the boss. And then you're talking about the four kids. Now, I don't understand the Trinity. You can read any book in the world that you want, and I don't believe it will clarify all of the Godhead for you enough. Okay? Because I, I believe what Hebrews says. The Word of God is sharper than two, any two-edged sword and able to separate soul, and I can't remember the rest of it. What is it? Soul and spirit. All right. We got psychologists arguing what soul, what spirit. I don't know, brother, but I know I got soul. I know I got spirit. Hallelujah. And I know I got a made up mind. So that's good enough. All right. The Bible says this the whole purpose of the Holy Spirit is to give you a directive. Okay. What did, what did the Bible say? What did John write? If we walk in the light as He is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all, what kind? Unrighteousness. Boy, that whacks us. Because we love being right. <laughs> Shoot. Everything. All right, I'll wrap it up because it's, uh, oh, it took, it's five after eight. All right. I'll close with this. Uh, real quickly, the truth is there's no revelation without the Holy Ghost. Without the Holy Ghost, there's no power in this Word. Okay? No vision, no peace, no joy, no freedom. Have you ever been in a church where you thought you was in a cemetery? Huh? I've been in churches they were so cold and dead they couldn't resurrect a nap. And I'm telling you, it's sad that in America we have a lot of churches, and I'm not their judge, but I'm just telling you because that's fact, that are cold and dead. And I don't want us to ever become cold and dead. Now if you have to turn down the heat, pay the bills, that's fine. But don't turn down the fire of the Holy Ghost with speaking in tongues and anointing of our word is preached to us by our pastor. Oh, that makes me want to shout. Won't cost you nothing. Don't get excited. I'm not going to take an offering. Hallelujah. But I will be at the back. Freely you have received, freely give. Hallelujah. No. And then I'm going to, said I'm going to close. Like the little boy was in church one time and he's sitting with his dad. And his, the pastor said, I'm going to close. The little boy asked his dad, says, what does that mean? And his dad said, not a thing, son, not a thing. Hallelujah. So that's where it's at. So next week, we'll pick up from there. And we'll start with the Holy Spirit's supreme authority okay and and that's one of the things that our pastor he's in that pulpit he is the authority and he's got to be careful how he leads his people in following the Holy Ghost 
And you've got to be careful how you deal with tongues and interpretation and all of these things. Because what would happen is, okay, people automatically assume everything is spiritual. Everything ain't spiritual sometimes. But most of the time it is. Okay? But see, here's what they do. They'd accuse him of quenching the spirit if he tried to take authority and give leadership when the Holy Ghost is moving. Sometimes they're not quenching the spirit. They're not doing that. They're only trying to keep the service in order because that's what Paul said. Let everything be done in decency and in order. And if it's out of order, you will feel it in the church. There will be confusion. All right, that's a sour note to end on. Praise God. Yes. I understand that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Like my daughter said, Dad, I want you to buy me a Ferrari when I get to be a teenager. Yeah, and and back then, Ferrari would have cost $60,000. And I said, she said, how much they cost? I said, $60,000. She said, oh, Dad, you're a preacher. That's pocket change for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't God good tonight, church? Give the Lord a clap off and a praise. Tell Him how much you love Him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God. I'm glad I'm in a Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled, tongue-talking, tithe-paying, singing, shouting, dancing, Bible-reading, Holy Ghost people. Amen. Father, we praise You tonight. We thank You for the move and the power and the Spirit of the Holy Ghost that has spoken to us through Your Word and anointed us with the presence of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we look forward to living for you every day, every day, until that great day when you come to receive us unto yourself. And until then, Lord, we will run the race with diligence and look forward to the coming of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Shake hands, be friendly, hug each other's neck, and uh, praise God.